transmission is all painted up and it turned out pretty darn good all right so we've been busy working on the uh, parts here for the transmission swap we got the bell housing adapter off the engine in the last video so we went ahead and got that all cleaned up and uh, painted beautiful cat yellow we did have one one of the starter bolts was broken when I went to take it apart and whoever broke it had drilled it out and tried to get it out I guess and just gave up and just put two back in so we uh, we finished we were able to get that bolt back out of there after a little bit of a struggle but we got it out so there will be three bolts holding it on uh, we went ahead and we cleaned up our transmission we got kind of all the unnecessary things off of it for now the all the wirings off of it except for the harness where it goes through to the pan I, I want to get the dipstick tube off I ordered a new plug so both sides will just have plugs in it for now because our dipstick tube is a little bit crusty and it also has a small hole in it we're gonna be getting a new dipstick tube but for mocking up and getting in the truck it'll be easier to do without the dipstick tube on you can read the fluid level electronically through the control pad but if you get rid of the dipstick tube, how are you going to get fluid in it? This transmission was also a little bit crustier than I thought it was going to be. I mean, it was in a salt truck, so I don't know what I was expecting. But you can see once we got it pressure washed off, this case is pretty chewed up in here. And we even uncovered two little holes right there. But the rest of it is in pretty okay condition. There's some pitting here and there, mainly like where they bolted a piece of steel through the aluminum. All in all, not awful. And we're going to take that to the welder and see if he can weld those up real quick shouldn't be an issue and we also got all the wiring dismantled uh, we got the big Walmart box just full of, that's all the junk wire that we don't need um, I saved every single connector off of this one thing I learned from last time doing this is like that one connector that you can't find anywhere can hold you up like a week you know like when I was doing the transmission modulator it took me forever to find that connector and I ended up having to go to the junkyard and dig through a bunch of vehicles in order to find one so this time around we saved every connector off of this this truck but this is all the wiring that we need for the transmission to make it work hopefully I'm gonna completely redo all the wiring repin all the harnesses only use what we need and make it look a little prettier um, I don't Allison must get these these Deutsch connectors really cheap or something because they had them like everywhere and this one here you can tell before I bought it someone had already most of the way eliminated that connector and like these wires here don't even go anything to anything so stuff like that we're not gonna need I mean there's a whole connector here I'm sure this does something and someone will yell at me and tell me what it does but uh, it just has a cap on it so I don't see us really needing that so we'll probably end up eliminating those wires We'll probably end up repinning these two connectors here this is what goes to the TCM I couldn't get that connector apart there so I cut them I left them a little long so we could see what wires go to what this is our relay box here it has like four or five relays in it that do like your neutral switch reverse lights that kind of stuff this is basically your I think they call it the VIM the vehicle interface module so um, unfortunately the bolts that hold those connectors in have seen better days so I don't know if we're gonna be able to get those out I'm sure we'll, we can get them out if anyone knows about these Allison transmissions hit me up this is kind of uncharted territory for me I've never messed with one of these Allison's um, and lucky enough for us the the tag with the serial number and all that on it is missing so I can't really get information on this I'm having trouble finding wiring diagrams and that kind of stuff so if you know Allison stuff you can help us out that would be cool for us so yeah we're gonna go ahead and get this transmission loaded up into the back of the Subaru and uh, probably tomorrow after my wife gets home I'll take it out and have it welded up So we are back from the welder um, and it didn't go great. He started welding it up, said it was welding like garbage. Cast material is tough to weld on no matter what and on a lot of these aluminum casings like this they throw a lot of garbage in with the aluminum. So he said there was a lot of pop metal in it. He was able to get the two holes welded up. He hardly quit welding and it cracked. You can, I don't know if you guys can see that. There's a nice crack. It runs all the way from down here all the way up and he said that uh, that was it he's not going any further because he said he could chase this crack all over the casing and then end up having it split so plan B we're gonna weld it ourselves this was actually what he recommended he said you know what Drew just go out and get yourself some JB weld slap it in there it'll keep it from leaking uh, we're gonna clean it up JB weld it 
and uh, then we're gonna get the whole thing cleaned up and painted so All right, transmission is all cleaned up, looking pretty good. So we're gonna set about painting it. All right, guys, the transmission is all painted up, and it turned out pretty darn good. Definitely happy with that. It makes it look uh, newer. You can see our, our weld. You know, we got good penetration, so we're not worried about that at all. Definitely wish I had done this when I originally did the build, but, I mean, I know we're going to have to we're gonna have to take a couple bolts out. We're, I'm gonna, once it's in the truck, we'll change out these filters. We'll probably also flush the fluid, so we'll fill it up, run it for a little bit, and flush the fluid out of it just in case we got any dirt or crap in it in this process. But it's kind of—I was noticing earlier when I was cleaning this up—it actually, I think these are all plugs that lead to different uh, passageways because we got like C4, C3, C1. So that must be for uh, diagnostic work. You can put a gauge on it and see what clutch packs are activating and stuff. Yeah, she turned out really nice. So. Definitely happy with that. Can't wait to get it in the truck and uh, see what it looks like all together. See what it drives like, really. That's what I'm most excited for. We also spent some time, which this is rare for us, but we spent some time this week cleaning up the shop. You can see there's like, you can put a wrench on this bench now. There's enough space. I mean, look at back here. Like, I have not seen this bench in the longest time, but I figured it'd be a good idea to kind of go into this project with a fresh, clean shop area. So, yeah, this is exciting. We're going to. We're gonna keep picking away at this, see if we can't, you know, like find homes for a lot of different stuff. But it's awesome. Huge shout out to my man Paul for the pressure washer hookup. Paul's pressure washers on Instagram. But anyways, that's gonna be a wrap for this video. We went ahead and got the transmission all nice and pretty looking. We got the bell housing adapter nice and pretty looking as well. So we are all set to start tearing the truck apart, and that's gonna be next week. We're gonna get the gantry set back up. We're gonna get the cab off the truck. We're gonna tear it all apart. And uh, it should be a good time. You know, it's always nice when you get to do things twice. So stay tuned for that video. If you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. If you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe. And go ahead and leave your comments down below. I enjoy reading your feedback on the things that we're doing here. So uh, yeah, we'll catch you in the next one.